WKRT K291 Kansas City. Gospel 1590 106.1 FM. It's 9 o'clock AM. Welcome to the Morning Glory Show. Turn your volume up and let the word to God pierce your soul. 1590 AM on your radio dial and 106.1 on your FM, pal. Thank you for tuning in to the Morning Glory radio broadcast with Drs. Adam and Adrian Blackstock of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Sit back and get ready to receive a word that will transform your life. Good morning, good morning, radio family. This is Prophetess Adrian Blackstock, Executive Pastor of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church under the leadership of Bishop Adam Gordon Blackstock. I'm glad to be here with you this morning. I have an awesome word for you this morning, so you're going to want to make sure you get individuals to tune in. But as you're getting your Bible and your paper and pen ready, I want to um, invite you to be a part of the Prophet's Corner, which is tonight. It is a live streaming that comes on at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, Central Time, and so I want you to be there in the place. My special guest um, this evening will be Apostle Mary Gilbert. Amen. And so we're just been having an exhilarating time, a powerful time um, with the Prophet's Corner, and this ad will be shown on Facebook. You can go get the live as well as you can get the GBFIC app, GBFIC app, and you can keep up with all of what's going on at the Prophet's Corner as well as the previous messages for Glory Bow Fellowship International Church. So I would like to see you there, and we have an awesome lineup already. I have special guest male leaders within the greater Canyon City area that are going to be um, at the Prophet's Corner in the month of June. So you want to make sure that you stay tuned and tune in. Amen. And so we have an awesome time that is going to um, Bishop Adam is going to, we're in the time of the feast, which will start on Thursday. Um, Thursday. This is the, the Shavuot season, and then it leads us into Pentecost. And so we're in a more dean time with God, in spite of what is going on in the nation. Amen. This is why it's so important to know about the Jewishness of Jesus and knowing the seasons that we in, so that we know when we have trials and tribulation, it doesn't mean that God stops being God. He has always embedded into time where people, uh, people of God will have hope and not faint or shrink back. Amen. So join us Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. live on YouTube, Facebook. You get out there, get the app, listen. You will want to be in tune with what Bishop Adam is sharing with us on Wednesday night. Amen. And so this is an exciting time for you to be there. Well, I am going to... Um, have us in the book of Re- book of Revelation, Amen. And we're going to start with Revelation chapter twelve, and this is just a carry on from Sunday's message, Amen. And so this is not so much a logos word; um, this is a rhema word that is spoken for the body of Christ during this time. There is a lot of debate and and going back and forth within the body of, within the body of Christ within our city. In reference to, we have individuals um, that were to wear masks, and then there's those who won't wear the masks. And so the Father was speaking to me and said, tell my people they're going to have to have faith in the blood of Jesus. I'm going to say that again. You are going to have to have faith in the blood of Jesus. It's miraculous working power. Why is God speaking that? Amen. Because we don't have control over another man or woman. Hallelujah. I have control over me, amen. There are just going to be some people who are not going to obey the laws of the land. So as I was out and walking around, it still behooves me that individuals, we are um, facing an invisible enemy, and we have so many individuals who are gathering still in, in circles or going into stores, and they're not protecting themselves. They're leaving that up to maybe on behalf of other individuals, or they're leaving it up to behalf or to the people that's in the stores that they're going in. Um, Bishop shared with me, and it made the national news um, down at the Lake of the Ozarks, it was so many individuals that was gathering together. And those individuals are going to leave there over the weekend and go back to their pers- their perspective places. It was just absurd. So, We're not going to get into a hissy fit. So God says, listen, tell my people that the blood still works. Amen. 
And so that doesn't mean that you can be loosey-goosey because you have an understanding of the blood of Jesus. Amen. That means you do your part. If you're supposed to wash your hands, wash your hands. Keep your hands clean. Wear a mask when you're not doing social distancing. And if anything was to, you know, to happen, you're still covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so when we look here in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, we have to understand the time and season that we're in. So Revelation 12 at verse 10, I'm going to look at this in the King James Version, and then I'm going to jump over and look at it in the NLT or perhaps the Easy Version. Amen. So you guys bear with me because I am using this here technology. Amen. And so when we look here, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants, pay very close attention to that, of the earth and the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Amen? He has a short time. And so let's look at that in the um, easy translation. So I want to make this real easy for you. Amen? So you don't understand, so you don't miss anything. So it says, then I heard a loud voice in heaven that said, now God has saved his people from Satan's power. God has shown his great power as king. He's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. His special Messiah has shown his authority. Satan said bad things against our people. All day and all night, he has continued to say bad things against believers. But now they have thrown him out of heaven. So let me just help you. One of the broadcasts I'm going, one of the things I'm going to do, um, coming up on June the second in the Prophet's Corner, are demons real? Amen. You need to join me for that. Amen. And so here it is. It shows you here. But now they have thrown him out of heaven. But our brothers and sisters fought against him, and they won. They trusted the Lamb who died as a sacrifice. They continued to say that God's message is really true. They were ready to die as God's servants. So be happy, everyone who lives in heaven, but the earth and the sea will have bad trouble. The devil has come down to you now. He is very angry. He knows that he has only a short time to hurt people. I just I have it in my heart, it's my heart, that if individuals will understand this, if we will understand what the devil already knows, amen, because he knows the word, that the devil has come to you now. He is very angry, and he knows that he has only a short time to hurt people. Now, if you were to continue to read on, if you would read the book of Revelation, you will see everything has already been laid out. I want you for your homework, for the sake of time, I don't have time to go there, but I want you to read chapter 12 in its entirety. It speaks of how everything took place and how um, one-third of the angels, all of that is, is laid out there prophetically for you. And so we have to understand what God has put in place, how are we to be able to overcome during these here times, amen? whether it's sickness, disease, perils, or what have you, we have to get an understanding in the body of Christ of the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen? And so I want to make some of this here um, practical for you. So let's go over, um, since we have that understanding, let's go to 1 John 1, 1 John 1, and let's look at verse 7. Verse 7. It says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. See, the blood of Jesus, when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it cleanses 
you from all sin. If we will understand that and get that revelation in our head, that is the power of the blood. That is the power of what took place on the cross, amen, is that it was that blood cleansed you. It made it possible for you to be able to enter in and come into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at um, what it says in the Passion Translation. We're doing a really good Bible study here, amen. I want to make sure I don't come back and make you hoop and holler. I want you to get an understanding. But if we keep living in the pure light that surrounds him, he share, he, we share unbroken fellowship. See, that's what it's about. When you're not walking in sin, amen, you, you don't have unbroken fellowship with one another or with Christ. And the blood of Jesus, his son, continually cleanses us from all sin. Do you see that? Continually cleanses you from all sin. That's what the work of the cross has done for you. Let's look at it in the easy translation. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And it says here, but when we live in a right way, it is like living in the light. I want you to think about that. I was When I was meditating, looking at it, I didn't, on Sunday I didn't look at it in this translation when I was ministering. But it says you are living in the light. I think about John 1, and it talks about um, Christ being, you know, that Jesus is the light of the world. But here it is, because you have accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, amen, that now, hallelujah, that you are a part of that light. So if we live in the light, we share together, hallelujah, in the life which God gives. And when Jesus, the Son of God, died on the cross, he saved us from all our sins, all of our sins, the blood of his sacrifice makes us clean in front of God. So that is why it's important. That blood, it makes you clean. Amen. Do it mean that you're going to be perfect? But no. But when you really have confessed Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you have to come as you are. Amen. And you confess that. The blood cleanses you. It washes you. It purifies you. It sets you up in right standard. Now, there may be some errors in your life that you have to continue as you walk with God. Amen. Don't be a habitual sinner. Amen. And don't blame God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And please, please do not be religious because you're not doing the work to get yourself cleaned up and say, God knows my heart. You're trying to hold on. That's a religious statement. Yes, God knows your heart. That's the reason why he wants you to be cleansed and purified. Amen. You have to continue to do the work. The word of God says every man got to work out their soul salvation. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so when we have an understanding that one of the benefits to being a Christian, hallelujah, is not that you just get to read the word of God, not that you just have the power and using the name of Jesus, but also the benefit is being able to apply the blood of Jesus. Listen, but you cannot apply the blood of Jesus when you expect for it to be effective when you are on the enemy's side. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That's one thing um, I love about the old timers is that they had to understand. They may not have much. See, the issue is we got a whole lot of um, a whole lot of idols in place, and we think because we got our houses and our cars and and our latest clothes and all that. They didn't have much, but they knew about the power of the blood. Hallelujah. About pleading the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. So I want to come by here and make it very practical for you to be able to, during this time, amen, we're not going to bring um, discord. I, I preach that. Also. I'm not going to have debates with individuals um, uh, what we should do this and we should do that. Every leader is going to be held responsible for their own sheep. Amen. If you're not a part of a congregation, then I'm not talking to you. If you're not a shepherd, then I'm not talking to you. I am going by what the Word of God says. Amen. Those of us that are leaders in the body of Christ, he says that we are to be watchmen over the souls that he has put under. I'm not concerned about what's going on at the other church. Bishop and I have assignment for the souls that God has put up under us. And the decisions that we make, we, are, we have calendar calls. Decisions that we make for our house, amen, on the direction that we're saying that we're hearing from God, we're going to be held accountable for that. Glory be to God. So we got to get out of all this here debate, 
back and forth and all of this here. Glory. We need to walk in the power in the body of Christ as God has said to within the church. Now, are we going to be reckless? No. But what I am saying that God, what I'm seeing is that we cannot be in debate and bickering because that's what the enemy wants. A house divided cannot stand. So those of us who are mature saints, and even those of you who are babes and listening to me, we're going to rebuke fear. You're going to wear your mask when you are not in a social distancing, social distancing um, position, and you're going to be, have, be covered with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is the reason what the Father is saying. We're going to plead the blood. Think about it. If, if say, for instance, if there's over 30,000 people listening to me right now, and if we all get an understanding that we are going to walk under the righteousness of God and in the light of God, and that we have power and authority to plead the blood of Jesus, to draw the bloodline. Why? Because it is a benefit to you as being a child of God. So, therefore, we don't have to allow fear to grip our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, the Bible says, it says be it according to you faith. Amen. Now, I understand, before even the coronavirus came, I am a pleading the blood type of woman. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But I'm still not, when, even when I go out, I still, when I'm going in public places, I'm going to put my mask on. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be, just think, just because I know I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, I'm going to do things reckless. I know where my faith is at, but I can't speak for everybody else where they're at in their faith. Okay, so we got to drive out fear. Some of you need to drive out fear by the blood of Jesus. You cannot be a scared saint during this here time. That's what the enemy wants. Gee, we got, if we're going to fall out that big brother Jesus, Jesus hung out with lepers. He hung out with sinners and, and sickness and disease and all of that. We still have to be the church in the name of Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and, gov- and, and, and govern you. But cover yourself with the blood of Jesus as you walk out through this here um, time with this COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. So when we look over, we go to Hebrews, um, Hebrews 9 and 14, look what it says. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offer himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. See, some of you um, need to have an understanding not just about the power of the blood of Jesus because we're in this time of a virus. Some of you need to understand that you need your conscience to be purged from the dead works so you can serve the living God. Amen? See, the battlefield is in the mind. That's where it begins at. I, I, lo- I like this King James because it talks about the conscience. And amen. You got the subconscious. You got the you got your up um, subconscious, up subconscious. You know we always got all these thoughts that's coming in. You need to plead the blood of Jesus against those negative thoughts that's coming in. You need to plead the blood of Jesus against that fear that's coming in in the name of Jesus. So we have to pick back up the authority of the blood of Jesus and make this practical. How do we do that? Amen. I'm sitting here in my in my bay window. Here at home, and I like to, you know, the Word of God says that when I when I wake up in the morning, I say I take my rightful place at the right hand of Jesus. I put on the full arm of God, and I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. And then you got to learn how to draw the bloodline. If you're not doing anything, you need to draw the bloodline around your property in the name of Jesus. You should not be having the devil running havoc, hallelujah, on your property in the name of Jesus Christ. That's a practical application. I just told you how to do it. Amen. It ain't no trick to it. You know, speak it out your mouth. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The the scripture also say we come over for a sake of time. Amen. Let me see if I have time to go over in the book of Leviticus. You may have also heard in reference to sprinkling the blood. That's Leviticus sixteen and fourteen. Now get this. Leviticus sixteen and fourteen says and he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his fingers upon the mercy seat eastward and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his fingers seven times. 
Now, if that was the blood of animals, and Jesus Christ has now come to the cross, and we know that the blood has been sprinkled on the mercy seat for you and for me in the name of Jesus, how much more powerful that we should be able to walk in because we are the true living sons of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we, we apply that blood. Um, I love to listen to, I love to find old testimonies of, of practical application. And uh, one of the ones I was uh, read. I have a book that's called the, uh, the Blood and the Glory by Billy Brim, and she gives so many testimonies in there on how, um, yeah, even during a time of crisis, uh, one of the ones that, um, that stands out to me, there was this pastor, uh, he was, you know, doing the work of the Lord or what have you, and because of the, the, the country that he was in, he was, he was doing havoc, you know, creating havoc upon the kingdom of darkness. And so the enemy would start to speak to him and say, I'm going I'm to do this, and I'm going to do that to your, your children. I'm going I'm to get your children to um, have rabies or what have you, because he had a large property. And so he got together instead of being in fear because he knew he couldn't stop the work of the Lord. And he came together, and him and two or three other believers, they say, we, we draw the bloodline around my property in the name of Jesus for protection of my household and my children. And sure enough, uh, one of the individuals that was back there at his home a couple of days later um, said he went to walk the, the ground because he had a lot of acres, and he found five dead um, foxes. And so they took the foxes to get tested, and sure enough, the foxes had rabies. But when the foxes tried to get near, oh, get near the property of the man of God, they died. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You own your house. That house belongs to you. Plead the blood, plead the blood line around the property from the north, the south, the east, and the west in the name of Jesus. You're in an apartment or what have you. Plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We cannot walk around in fear. Hallelujah. I love, I've been meditating in the book of Joshua, chapter, Joshua chapter 1, where um, God began to speak to Joshua and say, every place your feet shall tread upon, it shall be yours. That's the importance of when you're doing a prayer walk. Don't just walk. Hallelujah. I see a lot of people doing a lot of walking, but what are you saying? Are, are you covering the streets when you walk? If you are a Christian, amen, he said every place does Every place the sole of your feet shall tread upon it shall be yours in the name of Jesus. You take back the territory in the name of Jesus. You release the blessed of God over your city in the name of Jesus. You release the blood of Jesus when you're walking out. Where, everywhere you go, so when you go into Walmart, you don't have to be fearful that somebody's going to come in there and shoot it up. Why? Because you're there and you're taking the blood of Jesus when you go in. We got to rise up and walk in our power and authority. And some of y'all that's dealing with sickness and disease, see, the only power that Satan has against some of us is that he's trying to get you to quit. That's the reason why we got to lay hold of what it says in, a, in Revelation chapter 12, that what we, we have already, the work has already been done. It was done on the cross. We overcome Satan by the power of the blood and the testimony of Jesus Christ, and we love not our lives unto death. When you get a revelation and when you know that you are so enough saved, hallelujah, I don't care if you're 30, I don't care if you're 40, I don't care if you're 50, I don't care if you're 17. When you get a revelation that you have eternal life, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God, and you don't have to be fearful about what's going to happen to your life, hallelujah, then there will be a greater power and authority that will come over you in the name of Jesus. You won't be have to run around fearful and scared. Why? Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, what you ought to walk in is that you're not going to just lay down and allow Satan to, to override you in the name of Jesus and make you leave here before your time, hallelujah, you ought to be fearful to do the work of the Lord. When you have access and power to the name of Jesus, there is no other name. Hallelujah. Demons flee at that name in the name of Jesus. You have the word of God that you can hurl her, her, that word of God. It's, it's, it's a sword unto you in the name of Jesus. Put it in your mouth. Let it get down in that heart and let it come out of your mouth. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Hallelujah. I'm about ready to make my, hallelujah. I'm about ready to run around my bedroom in the name of Jesus. I hope I came by to stir you up in the name of Yeshua Yamashiach. 
because the blood still, say that to my, the blood still works. Hallelujah. It works. You utilize it, it works. So I done gave you two points. You're going to draw the bloodline. You can plead the blood of Jesus. And right now, I want you to take him on, take your left hand and hold up over your head in the name of Jesus. First, we're going to say this, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of all my sins, known, unknown, word, thought, and deed, in the name of Jesus. Satan, I destroy your works in my life in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, release a greater conviction upon me, and I receive your power and your authority in the name of Jesus. Cover me of fresh with the blood of Jesus. Come on, sprinkle the blood. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over me. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over my children and my children's children. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over my spouse, over my immediate family, over my extended family. I release the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Woo! The blood still works. Yes! Yes, come on, the blood still works. The blood of Jesus against cancer. The blood of Jesus against high blood pressure. The blood of Jesus against poverty and lack. The blood of Jesus over your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, you should, I decree you should have peace. Come on, stand. Hold the blood stained banner in the name of Jesus Christ. And that the blood of Jesus over your children to come out of, out of incarceration, to come out of drug addiction, to come out of lust and fornication. We release the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, it shall be condemned. Because you are a child of God. It's your benefit. Hallelujah. I don't know how much more time I got. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I, as I leave here today, remember Jesus is Lord. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, feel free to partner with us by sowing a seed at gbfic.org or mailing a check to Morning Glory at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri, 64064. If you need special prayer of any kind, please feel free to call us at 816-795-1900. Camp is a great place to get a break, encounter Jesus, and build important life skills. City Union Mission's summer Bible camps for kids in poverty are dependent on hundreds of God-focused volunteers ages 16 and up. Please consider ways you could help. Commitments are as little as two hours or as much as a week and range from lots of kid contact to service roles to office tasks. To learn more about volunteering at Camp Comcito, email campworkers at cityunionmission.org. Hey, I'm Debbie D with Slim for Life. I lost 20 pounds with Slim for Life. Hey, you can do it too. Summer is around the corner and it's time to take action and take control of our weight and get healthy. If we've learned anything, it's that our health is a priority. Slim for Life is here to help. Start your program today and meet with your personalized weight loss counselor. Whatever way it works best for you, personal consultation, by phone or virtually. Make a call or go online and start today. It offers relief for joint stress, gives you more energy, and changes your outlook on life. Think about it, and children join free with an adult enrollment. Slim for Life is the fastest, easiest, most effective.